National Broadcasting System presents I Love a Mystery, transcribed. telling you, the more I see of this setup, the more I wish we'd gone on about our own business. Jock, that isn't like you. What ain't like me? Why, here we are guests in a millionaire's home with three beautiful girls and only their grandmother to watch over them. And what a grandma. Boy, I don't like her. (laughs) Doc's had it in for Grandma Martin since she sent us back up here to our quarters right after dinner. Yeah, what'd she do that for? She think you're the only one in our outfit good enough to associate with the Martin family? I can tell you why. Well, I wish you would. She said she wanted me to have a serious discussion with her granddaughters, and if there were too many eligible young men in the room, the girls wouldn't think of anything else. Did she really say that, Jack? She did. And when I said man crazy, she jumped all over me. Well, these just plain ain't the kind of girls that I want to associate with. Not from what I've seen of them. She ain't got nothing to worry from me. Well, they have money. And so have we. 25,000 bucks reward money. And what I want to know is why we don't ditch this joint and get to spending it. That'll have to wait. Yeah, on what? On the solution of the trouble that's breaking about this old grandmother's head. Well, that ain't our hard luck. I'm afraid it is. Now. Why? Because Mrs. Martin's begged us to stay and help her out. I say, that haughty, stiff-necked female aristocrat begged you to stay here? That's right. So you can see how desperate she must be. But what's the matter? What are we supposed to do? None of it makes much sense yet, but I've got some tangled information. You want to hear it? Naturally. Throw me that other pillow, Reggie. I don't. Yeah. Thanks. Well, come on. Settle down and let's have it. All right. Now, let me give you a picture of the people in this house. Oh, you've seen them all now. No, I've only seen Grandmother Martin and two of the girls, Faye and Cherry. Faye described the others. First, Faye, or Faith, is the eldest. She describes herself as the vulgarian of the family. Oh, I say. The, the what? Vulgarian. She shocks her Puritan grandmother every time she opens her lips. On the other hand, I have a good idea that she has more gray matter than all the rest of the family put together. Mm, good looking? Yes, apparently all the Martin girls are extraordinarily beautiful. Well, that's Faye, the Bulgarian. The next girl is Hope. Hope wasn't in on the conference tonight, although she'd been told to be there by her grandmother. Yeah, where was she? Sneaked out with the chauffeur. Hey, I say, one of the Martin girls? Yes, according to Faye, this will be the fourth chauffeur to lose his job in three months on account of Hope. Faye's name for Hope is the family wench. Well, no wonder Grandmother Martin is upset. Faye, the Bulgarian, Hope, the family wench. And now we come to Cherry. Quite. And, uh, what is Cherry? Well, Faye calls her Cherry the Terrified Mouse. Hey, that ain't so bad. She ain't spoke above a whisper since we come into the house. Uh, are they still after her? Well, there's no doubt that she has an obsession that someone's after her. But it looks like with good reason. But you you, uh, you you mean you think somebody in this house really is trying to kill her? Well, I don't know whether they're trying to kill her, but they certainly are keeping her in a continual sweat of terror. In what way, Jack? First, slashing her arm. Second, pushing her down that flight of stairs. Oh, Grandma didn't take that very serious. Neither did Faye at first. When she heard it, she said, Oh, so the terrified mouse fell downstairs again. Again? Yes, looks like it was a common occurrence. But then I put in my two cents worth and scared the living daylights out of both Faye and Grandma. Well, what would you want to scare them for? I didn't mean to. It wasn't until after I'd said it and saw their reaction that I knew it meant anything. Well, come on. Uh, what did you say? I said I heard a baby crying just before Cherry fell downstairs. Who does it belong to? Well, what's so terrifying about that? Whose infant is it, Jack? And uh, where's the nursery? There isn't any nursery. And there isn't any baby. Why, Dad busted, Jack, there is too. We heard it. There isn't any baby in this house. You, you're being serious? I, I mean to say, we did hear it. Well, Jerry's been hearing it for some time now. She says every time the baby cries, something terrifying happens. You mean a baby's haunting this house? I don't mean anything of the kind. Then what do you mean? I don't know. I'm just stating what I've heard. Cherry's been complaining of hearing a baby crying in the house and that every time she hears it, something vicious happens. The rest of the family have laid it to delusion. Oh, but see here, Jack, what we heard was no delusion. That's just the point. That's what frightened Faye and Grandma. The fact that we heard the baby proves that Cherry hasn't been talking through her hat. Doggone. Who ever heard of a house being haunted by a baby? Rubbish. Well, there it is, ain't it? A baby's voice and no baby. It's a plot. A plot, huh? Well, didn't Jack just get through saying that the kid cried just before something bad happened? Mm, That's what that girl Cherry says. And what she says is true on account, looky. We heard the baby cry, and then right after that, she was pushed downstairs. 
quiet, I grant you that. Well, okay. Y- you mean to tell me whoever's doing all this is running around this house with a baby in his arms, uh, pinching it to make it cry just before he gets ready to, to do some of his dirty work? Well, that's pretty silly, Doc. Well, of course it's silly. That's just what I'm saying. Besides, there ain't no baby in the house. So what? So it's got to be a baby ghost. Oh, for the love of Pete, Doc. Well, it has, Dad. Blast it. A baby ghost in this house on account of there's so much trouble and so many things is wrong. And every time that something else starts to go wrong, it, it it tries to warn folks by crying just before it happens. Beautiful theory. Well, you think of a better one. Why? Okay, okay. The trouble with you and Reggie is that you wouldn't know a ghost if it come up and... And, and laid and... an egg in my hat? <laughs> That's just plain vulgar. <laughs> Why? Because ghosts don't lay eggs. Oh. Well, they don't. All right, all right. Now, do you want to hear the rest of my story? Well, what about this baby cry? That's all there is. You know as much about it as I do. And that also brings us up to date on Cherry. Oh, Cherry, the uh, terrified mouse. Hope, the family wench. And Faye, the Bulgarian. And the last on our list is Joe. Mm. Oh, that's brother, huh? Yes, in age he comes between Faye and Hope. According to Faye, he's the one who's breaking Grandmother Martin's heart. Mm, and uh, has Faye a name for him, too? Yes, Job the good-natured drunk. Drunk, huh? And what does Grandmother Martin say about that? She tried to keep his name out of the conversation, said he was the only one worthy of the family name. Faye, on the other hand, says he's never sober and has been taken by every crook and confidence man in Hollywood. Just a never-end and easy mark, huh? Looks like it. And Grandma's always paying out and covering up for him, for the good of the name of Martin. Oh. When are we going to meet him? I don't know. When he comes home, I suppose. Well, where is he now? I tried to find out. No one seemed to know. Faye suggested some night spot with a well-stocked bar. I say, nice boy. Ah, company. Sit still. Listen. What's the matter, Jack? Nothing. Just wait. I say, whimsy. I get it. Hello. Why, you little wench. Oh, you've been talking to Faye. Reggie, toss me a blanket. What's that? A blanket, a blanket. <laughs> Not a wet blanket, I hope. Well, just toss it. There, I'll put this around you. You don't like me this way. No. They cost a lot of money at the best shops. Okay, so they cost a lot of money. Now, come on in. Why didn't you like them? Handmade and imported French lace? Now, keep that blanket around your shoulder. Here, sit down. What's it, Amy? <laughs> I almost sat on the floor. Drunk again. <laughs> Don't tell Grandma. I never had a drink in my life. Oh, it's queer. No smell of liquor on her breath. She's as sober as we are. I say, Jack, who is this? Who am I? Yes. No, no, wait. I'll give you a clue. I'm not Faith and I'm not Charity. Now, who am I? Your hope. That's right. Why'd you knock on our door if you don't know who we are? I saw a light. Thought I ought to investigate. In long black stockings and a wisp of lace? Imported French lace. Where have you been? No, no, no. Mustn't tell. Scandalous. Ruin the family name. Out with the chauffeur, won't you? Shh, don't let Grandma hear. Come on, now you're not drunk. Where's your dress? <laughs> I said, where's your dress? <gasps> what dress? Look here, Hope. You want me to shake your shoes off? Where did you leave your dress? You didn't want me to wear a dress with blood on it, did you? Hey, what did you say? Of course not. Nobody wants to wear a dress with blood on it. It's ugly. Doesn't match the color scheme. Hope, listen to me. What kind of a dress were you wearing? Slip-on, slip-off dress. I always wear slip-on, slip-off dress. I mean, what was the material? What color? Green. My favorite color. Green flowers. Now then, where'd you leave it? <laughs> Looked out of it in the dark downstairs. Tossed it to Bob. Bob's a good egg. He'll get rid of it. Nobody ever find it. Who's Bob? Best chauffeur Martin family ever had. Is he home? Did he bring you home? Yep. Bang, bang. Man shot dead right across our table. I got blood on my dress, so Bob says, Quick, let's get the ten-letter word out of here. <laughs> I always say ten-letter word for swearing. Doc, Reggie, I want you to go down and find the chauffeur. I don't. Bring him here? If you'll come. Anyway, get Hope's dress back. Uh, Jack. Yeah? Look, look at her right leg. Hmm? There's something on her stocking. Looks like blood, all right. There is. Here, keep that blanket on. <laughs> Unfasten your stocking. Let her slip down. Oh, naughty. Crazy oh, little fool. There's been murder. Do you want the evidence splattered all over you? Yeah, that's better. Well, what are you two standing there for? Well, if, if Hope could tell us where the chauffeur's quarters are. Chauffeur's quarters? Over garage. Chauffeur's quarters always over garage. I know. Come on, Doc. Yeah, okay. Hey, hey, what's that? Listen. The baby. The baby. The baby. The baby. Stop that. Jack, there's just got to be a baby in this house. <coughs> Jack, I say. <coughs> which way did that scream come from? Down the stairs. Down the stairs. Well, come on. The baby, and, and then something happens. Down the stairs, this way. The baby, and then something happens. The baby, Stop and then saying that, Doc. 
Oh, there she is. There in the chair. I say, who is she? Mrs. Faye. Faye. Faye, what's the matter? Out, out there by the hall entrance. He's dead. He's dead. Dead? Who's dead? The chauffeur. The chauffeur. And he's got Hope's dress. All over with blood. <laughs> Further transcribed adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at this same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Thorson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York. Frank McCarthy speaking. <laughs>